Dear colleagues, friends, uh, a very good morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you're connected. Uh, let me share my screen once again. Okay, uh, so welcome to the, the August 7th uh, LGMA webinar towards COP27, um, presented by ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability, in its capacity as the focal point of local governments and municipal authorities constituency. My name is Yunus Arikan. I'm like the director of global advocacy, and I'm also the performing the task of the, the LGMA focal point on behalf of ICLE and LGMA constituency. Um, we are now planned to have around one hour of a webinar that takes into that focuses on the basics of our engagement in the UNFCC process, uh, our achievements from the last uh, COP, uh, the, the priority things that has happened in the past couple of weeks uh, since the last uh, webinar in July in particular, and our preparations for COP27. Uh, for those who are uh, joining us the first time, this webinar is recorded. I hope it is recorded, by the way. <laughs> um, and um, uh, Alessia, if you can just check that, that would be helpful. Um, we usually run this um, webinar uh, by a brief presentation of where you could insert your, in the chat box or Q&A answer uh, screens, your comments. If there's anything burning, we can interrupt and respond. But we, we rather prefer to have the discussion at the end and we are able to intervene from your microphones as well. Um, uh, this webinar is repeated in the afternoon of, of, of the European time. We're based in Bonn, Germany. So this, this, one, this session is particularly for the Eastern Hemisphere. For the Western Hemisphere, we repeated the similar um, webinar at 4 p.m. Uh, Central European summertime. Um, in both of those webinars, we have our guest Ingrid Kotze from ICLE uh, Cities by the Earth Center based in, South Af based in Africa Secretariat in, in Cape Town to share with us updates on the, on the biodiversity process, the COP15 negotiations as well. Um, and in the afternoon session, our colleague Kale is also helping us to moderate, whereas in the morning, I really, I usually take it the moderation myself, including the, the um, presentation as well. Um, and uh, I am confirmed that the, the re recording is available, which will be then uploaded on our YouTube channel, but also the presentation will be made available to all participants and the LGMA constituency later on. So with this um, in mind, um, uh, we also were expecting for today, to, in time to time, we have guests and we have contributing partners from the LGMA constituency. This session, we may expect to have uh, confirmation uh, in, input from our colleagues from C40 with the focus on migration, but we're checking with them. Maybe Claude, Claudia could join us in the afternoon session as well. So we'll see uh, how things evolve during the next couple of minutes. Um, just an introduction, the LGMA constituency is, is one of the oldest in the UNFCC process. We were, uh, we have been following the process since the first COP. We are one of the three constituencies along with business and environmental NGOs, the, the, the local government and municipal authorities constituency was following every COP since then. However, we all know uh, things have evolved, especially in, in the last couple of, um, in the last 10, 10 or 15 years because the UNFCC and the Kyoto Protocol did not recognize uh, local governments as much as it was addressed in the Rio Convention, in the Rio Summit, uh, the, 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 the Agenda 21 and Local Agenda 21 was a strong uh, legacy, but unfortunately, there was uh, certain challenges in the UNFCC process. So until uh, around 2007, when there was a decision to rewrite the, 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 the new regime, we were relatively less active, but starting from the climate roadmap, we had been actively involved. When we say we, I mean, uh, the networks of local and regional governments uh, and their partners. Uh, as of today, we are reached to a, a group of more than 45 uh, networks who have been accredited to UNFCC, which is constituting officially the LGMA constituency. But uh, we are aware the UNFCC accreditation process is tedious, it's, it takes time, and not every network can have this capacity. Therefore, 
the LGMA is in practical terms reaching out a broader community of, of partners and and, uh, and and even if they're not accredited, especially if they're involved in the climate action, we engage them through our mailing list and these webinars are also, also, also open to public. Um, and, and when we uh, participate at COPS, we also have particularly ICLE and, and other others as well, try to accredit uh, our colleagues among those who are not in the accreditation system of the UNFCC. What do we usually do is really we follow the negotiations and, and, and participate in the in the decision making as much as possible, providing inputs. Of course, decision making is under the authority of the, the national governments, but uh, we raise, raise our voices and we will just touch upon it a couple of slides later in, in terms of how we do it. Um, and these are the milestones, especially towards Paris Agreement we made a very big mobilization after parts, especially with Marrakesh partnership in the action agenda, we are very active. Uh, on the way to Glasgow, we focused on the the, the, the multi-level action to become the, the new momentum, the new uh, normal, and, and we managed to get this in the, as a result of the COP26 Glasgow Climate Pact. And now we are saying that the second phase of the Paris Agreement has started, and this has to be multi-level as a default uh, ingredient that is different than the, the previous one. So um, we have a website. Uh, it is now currently being updated, especially to catch up what we have left since COP26. Um, the daily, the week, sorry, the monthly webinars, the 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 LGMA videos towards the fifth anniversary of the Paris Agreement, uh, are all available on our YouTube channels, um, as well as uh, you can access to our uh, documents in the website as well. Um, the previous recordings are were the previous sessions were held in these dates, and the next ones will be in September, October, November, December, as 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 we have scheduled as here. You can see once you register, you have access to all the the, the, the sessions in the morning and afternoon sessions. Um, just to recap, recap uh, we said that at, at COP26, time for multi-level action has come and we managed to make this reality. This was a proposal from LGMA on the way to Glasgow. From Madrid, we had this idea that time for multi-level action is the, the, the key and the outcomes prove that this has happened and this has been embraced by national governments as well. Towards COP26, we have seen nations raising their climate ambition through collaboration with local energy governments, knowing that it's not enough, but there had been experiences that the national climate ambitions were raised because or, or when they engaged the local energy governments. Meanwhile, 1,000 or more than 1,000 cities and regions committed to climate neutrality by 50, by 2050 and uh, ambitious targets by 2030. These are our, our preparations towards Glasgow. What we achieved at Glasgow in terms of physical presence, 400 plus uh, participants, delegations, 200 plus events. Uh, we have a pavilion. We have released our roadmap uh, announcements on, on food, uh, biodiversity, the funds, um, uh, particularly Scottish uh, loss and damage contributions, um, and then numerous bilateral partnerships and, and multi-level partnerships. Um, COP26 was unique in, to, in the sense that multi-level action pavilion played a key role as being the home for subnationals uh, in the blue zone. Uh, it was managed uh, by ICLE or facilitated by ICLE, but hosted by Scottish government and supported by more, more than 30 organizations. Uh, and that became clear that this hybrid space will be our uh, secured and safe space throughout the blue zone. Uh, and we would like to repeat it in, in Sharm el Sheikh in almost every COP from now on, especially now that multi-level has become a, an ingredient of the Glasgow Climate Pact. We don't have the luxury to not to have this multi-level action pavilion in the, in the years to come. And this connects to our outcomes that we have huge uh, successes from Glasgow, uh, but a lot of uh, things to be done still on the way towards Sharm el and beyond. Uh, we once again express our gratitude to all partners who contributed to the pavilion in Glasgow, and we'd like to repeat a similar success in Sharm el for those, again, uh, COP is not the only and the main, uh, yes, it could be occupying our huge energy, but it's not the only process or the only purpose for us. First of all, we participate in the negotiations by submitting inputs, uh, by influencing the decisions, and this is done by coordination internally throughout the year. 
we followed especially the action agenda with the champions with the marrakesh partnership there is a specific dedicated group called human settlements consisting of buildings and uh, waste and consumption but there are other thematic areas uh, we also participate in the race to resilience and race to zero um, and, and and other other uh, data platforms and others so that the voices of cities and, and action on the ground is visible at the subnational level at the global platforms as well COP presidencies in every uh, COP, this is a cyclic process. They have their own agendas. And for the years in the past, we have always had very fruitful relations. But obviously, the, the way they introduce their initiatives, they create their mechanisms are, are under their own prerogative. This does not have to follow the UNFCC principles as, as per se, but they do their best to make sure there is this synergy in terms of the secretariat work and, and champions work but they also introduce new agendas new consultation mechanisms and every year we try to be a part of it as much as possible um, and we will listen cop 27 presidency the incoming cop 27 presidency is really particularly showing a very very remarkable good practice in that sense and Finally, we are in collaboration with parties, the national governments, in, informally and formally, especially in, in the consultations and also drafting of the texts, but also with the initiatives, with partnerships. We want to make sure that the multi-level concept is embraced by a group of parties. We are aware in the UNFCC or in the UN, it's very hard to expect everyone to be on board. Certainly, some nations have much more uh, preference or priority for multi-level action. Uh, from the global north and south, uh, we are very proud that this is an agenda that unites many, many stakeholders, many, many partners and many, many parties. That's why it's important to continue this, this inclusive process and this important stakeholder consultation with the parties. Towards LGMA, uh, towards COP27, once again, we want to move or elevate from time for multi-level action to multi-level action delivers. We will see this is consistent with the vision of the presidency that it is the implementation and we want to make sure that if we have a second phase of the Paris Agreement, this has to be multi-level. This is focusing on NDCs. This is focusing on unfinished business on climate emergency. This focuses on having the first ever climate and urbanization minister, which we have made really good progress. We will touch upon it. And of course, we want to have more engagement with our African uh, members and constituencies, uh, as well as Mediterranean and Middle East and, and North Africa region, which is a uniqueness for Egypt, that they can be a representative or they can address these, um, let's say, regions, which let's be realistic or frank that they have not been so much engaged in the process so far. Um, as of June, the, the full structure is available. Um, we have a uh, president designate, we have the high level climate action champion, and we have a ministerial coordinator that is announced by the Egyptian government, um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Environment, and Dr. Mahmoud Mohildin. Um, we are aware uh, the, the, the UK, the, the presidency of COP, which is currently officially responsible for the implementation of the Glasgow outcomes, they are still active in the process. You may have been uh, noticing or you may have heard, for example, both within the UK government and recently in the Egyptian government, there are some changes, new assignments for the ministerial posts. Um, but as of today, we are aware both Alok Sharma and Sameh Shukri are staying in their positions. Um, this is a good news for us, but uh, we all know this is a domestic process, independent from COP. There may always be changes, uh, but so far we have established a very good relation with all the presidencies and their teams. Um, and uh, what was what is being very clear that there is a, also a harmony in terms of priorities between the UK and Egyptian presidency, which makes our lives much easier. There are opportunities to bring those agendas that was not touched in the past, but having the continuity of similar agendas is very, very helpful. And you will see, for example, uh, the presidency just announced, when I say president, it's the presidency, the high-level climate action champions, and the UNF secretariat, they have released their vision of what will be discussed in each day at COP. Um, you may have, you may remember, especially from Glasgow onwards, uh, the UNFCC negotiations uh, are trying to cover action agenda visibly in addition to the negotiations agenda, and they are trying to evolve it in the sense that it is spread throughout the two weeks, not in just focusing on a one 
couple of days. Um, so this has its own merits, uh, which means that action agenda is always part of the debate, but it is challenges, for example, uh, the negotiators may have certain legitimization to stay there for, for two weeks, but constituencies and stakeholders, especially for those who don't have resources, and especially nowadays with the quota restrictions, they may not be able to be there for fully. Um, so it will be a challenge for us to make sure that we are participating in every agenda item. Actually, when it's a multi-level uh, Paris Agreement, it is inevitable that every topic has to have local and local involvement in that in that the debate. So that 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 is making our lives a bit challenging because of the logistics, but also the the, the human resources. But as of today, what we see, uh, we are aware that the the process actually what is written here is uh, there's one missing point, which is the the 6th of November, which is a Sunday. Uh, and uh, this is mainly used as a procedural opening. And so that on Monday and Tuesday, the when the heads of states arrive, which became into almost like a, a regular practice of the NFCC COPs, which was uh, a unique feature and which is becoming, as, as I said, as a standard practice, uh, that they can smoothly attend um, their discussions. Some of the negotiations can also continue during this Monday and Tuesday. Uh, but then November 9th onwards, um, their, the regular UNFC surge and the negotiations continue. Uh, the way uh, we as, as, as observers engaged in the high level segment, uh, especially the heads of state level had, uh, high level segment, may vary depending on the, the prerogatives of the presidency. So we will see how this agenda will evolve, which means when the heads of state are in the rooms, in the plenaries, how will we speak or engage, interact? We don't know yet. Last year, it was extremely limited. There was only one speaker, uh, chair of C40 and mayor of Los Angeles, delivering one statement. Uh, so we hope this will be increased this year. Um, the, the the rest of the days are thematic on... on, on um, most of the, the topics are, are joined. Um, there are some new additions. For example, decarbonization has become an, a, a phrase um, that, that has been entered into the system, which is, I think, is a very good uh, approach. Um, in, the, in the agriculture, is now added by an additional terminology, which is food systems, which is also very good, because we also say agriculture uh, cannot be discussed without the, the consumers, which is, is the urban communities, most of the, the, the food is consumed by the cities. Um, and it's not just produce production in the agricultural fields, but urban agriculture, the urban consumption practice, food loss, food, uh, change of food habits could also come into the game. And I think this is also a very good signal because the term food systems also follows the UN food system summit that was held last year which again shows the continuity of the processes. Um, uh, other than that, the key issues, um, there are, uh, there's also uh, ACE as a spe specific topic in the, in the action agenda is very explicitly mentioned. It is in addition to the youth, that's also good because the ACE agenda is also beyond youth. I think that's also nice. Um, and finally, of course, 17th of November is very important for us, for local engineering, because it is announced as Solutions Day, but we are all expecting, if you read the, the description of the day, it is almost uh, in practice or de facto will turn into Urban Solutions Day, because uh, the topics that we'll cover will be including buildings, um, housing, waste, transport, these are primarily discussed under urban issues, uh, and we're also expecting climate and urban issues to take place on the 17th of November. Uh, and that's why we expect uh, in, indirectly this will be an Urban Solutions Day. Uh, luckily, the, the Global Climate Action, the Marrakesh Partnership, Partnership and High Level Champions also announced the human settlements uh, specific targeting on that day, that again strengthens our position on that day. But once again, we uh, both COP27 presidency has made it very clearly expressed in, in, in numerous consultations, as well as the Marrakesh Partnership has already expressed clearly that they will look forward to seeing local energy leaders or their staff, senior staffs or their representatives uh, through the networks to be engaged in all these agendas throughout the two weeks. Therefore, we have to really make sure we have to define 
who would be speaking or present and how it will be engaging and of course our our expectations from the, the negotiations as well to be clarified earlier uh, the unf the, the cop 27 president also announced their um um blue zone planning this is a layout i i also would like to commend them because uh this is very early in the year that is made available publicly that's very good uh i am also happy to inform you that we have secured a, a space for cop 27 blue zone multi-level action pavilion which gives us the confidence that we will repeat the success and hopefully go beyond uh, Glasgow or above Glasgow through our engagement with multi-level action pavilion uh, we are still waiting for some fine tunings especially in terms of costs um uh on the design and build um which will shape the the scope of our contributions from our partners because we all know that this is significantly budget a significant budget that we have to take into account we would like to endorse once again that scottish government has expressed their continuity of their support to the pavilion which is a very very great news uh but we will look forward to additional contributions and that will also shape slightly the agenda taking into account this vision that we shared before the, the calendar of the events we will follow or we will mirror those topics uh and we are happy that this is also shaping out nicely uh so we will we'll get back to you on that and we are very happy we already have received very uh, encouraging positive uh, feedback from many partners uh, in the next couple of days you will hear updates from ICLE in terms of how we'll advance in this process uh, and we all know um, or maybe you are all uh, aware with the mailings or the public announcements we have a unique experience this year since the the bond uh, conference in june the cop 27 president has expressed a clear interest to develop an initiative for sustainable cities in collaboration with the UN agencies, which is UN Habitat on behalf of UN, but also ICLE as the LGMA focal point, which has been recognized as one of the most um, inclusive and, and, and innovative practices that we have seen ever in the UNFCC process. Um, we, as LGMA constituency, immediately reacted positively to this very warm invitation from the COP27 presidency. Uh, we had our first consultations in June in Bonn, and we have mapped up a tentative calendar that we will engage with stakeholders at the World Urban Forum in Katowice, uh, end of June. And then we will have a, Cairo, a workshop in Cairo on the 27th of July. And this plan that was agreed in Bonn in June has been implemented perfectly and i can say and even exceeding the expectations uh the uh, the world urban forum consultations was both a closed meeting among among those represented and particularly those who do not necessarily follow the climate agenda that was the beauty that was the evolution uh, the benefit of the world urban forum consultations but at the public space at the one of the dialogues of the world urban forum was designed for greener urban futures which particularly focused on uh climate uh, action and the unfcc negotiations and we're very happy mayors uh, from um latin america europe in particular mayor dyksma as ICLE's special envoy for cop 27 ministerial as well as ministers uh, vice minister from colombia uh, assistant minister from egypt of minister of housing uh, they were both present along with other stakeholders like unep uh, deputy um, this gave us also the the, the chance that we could now vocally and publicly start to discuss and plan our presence and our outcomes towards COP27. Uh, immediately after Katowice, we had convened uh, under the invitation of the uh, COP27 presidency uh, in, in collaboration with UNHABITAT and facilitated by ICLE, um, a, a workshop that has uh, gathered around 70 participants, which in person but also around 40 participants virtually connected throughout the day it was an intense uh, working day um, and we have uh, been able to come up with a, a, a general consensus that it is essential to have a holistic uh, and inclusive approach for sustainable cities as part of the climate agenda and it is great that COP27 is putting this as a priority and we said that this has to be 
followed up by a special initiative, which may not be necessarily aiming to reinvent the wheel, but building on the existing initiatives, but also existing processes, but filling the gaps, but making more importantly, making it more systematic, making it more holistic rather than a piecemeal approach. With that, um, um, I can comfortably um, uh, announce and, and proudly announce that building on all these consultations, um, a draft concept note that was shared by the presidency last week uh, to the participants of the, the Cairo workshop, but as well as forwarded to the LGMA community as well, as well as Friends of Multilevel Action. Um, I see Anthony from WWF uh, Cities team. Thanks, Anthony, for your interest on the chat box that he's asking, what is the connection between the COP27 initiative for sustainable cities and the COP27 surge initiative? Anthony, in fact, these are the same things. We, we said that uh, COP27 initiative for sustainable cities is like a working title. Uh, now there is a proposal for an abbreviation. You may be aware, uh, I once, once again would like to commend the Egyptian presidency. They have several initiatives and their abbreviations for the first time in the UNFCC are meaningful. Uh, we are aware that there are so many abbreviations in the UNFC space, so many jargons, which doesn't make any sense to any outsider. But uh, now the, the initiatives that I have seen have at least some sense of a meaning, like uh, I think waste is um, for, for food, um, aware is for water. Um, and they have come up with an idea of surge for cities initiative. It has its full explanation. Uh, it is still subject to ideas, inputs, and impro improvements. So that's not written on stone yet. Um, so you are more than welcome to share your comments and, and that get, get, connects me to the to the next steps. So this, this document is open for inputs uh, from partners, stakeholders until 22nd of August. After then, there will be a review of all these inputs and, and there will be uh, like a uh, another round of consultation very likely at the Africa Regional Climate Week in Gabon, end of August. Uh, but we have to confirm this. Uh, it depends on who will be there in person. Um, but we thought it would be good, um, at least by the time of the Africa Week, if, if this document can be a revised version, can be available, that would be helpful. Uh, Presidency aims to make a, a soft launch with UN Habitat at the UN Habitat Habitat headquarters in Nairobi. Um, that is a practice they followed in other initiatives, like the, the food initiative was launched with uh, FAO in, in Rome and, and similar, similar practices. Um, official launch will, of course, be at COP27, but the logic of soft launch is that be, between soft launch in early September and the COP, the Egyptian presidents express or expects in particular, national governments to express their interest to join this. We are expecting there will be a huge uh, receive, re, this will be warmly received by the, the, the constituency, but uh, the national governments, how will they take this ownership is important. And the, the presidency wants to make this information that I can initiative to be announced earlier so that parties may have the time to discuss this at the capitals. And when they arrive to COP27, when they arrive to 17th of November, it is announced with the an announcement of a diverse group of uh, members uh, or parties. I must confess, I'm very, very um, excited and positive with this idea because even at the workshop in Cairo, both virtually and on site, there were a broad diversity of national government from the global north and global south who have both, who have all expressed positive uh, re responses or feedbacks. Obviously, the biggest discussion will be on the financing of these processes. The, the Egyptian presidency has rightly has expressed their expectation that it should have a time frame of 2030, which we also support. But of course, uh, financing initiatives, financing investments, financing uh, climate action is a big, big challenge. Yes, we are all aware this is not in the scale of the $100 billion discussions, but still uh, such capacity building uh, and institutional support budgets are even sh even more shrinked compared to the, the, the recent development so that it is not easy for national governments or convinced national governments to dedicate 
in kind or financial contributions to this kind of an initiative immediately. That's why there is a process that that's why there is an interest that there will be some bilateral talks. So it would be really good to, to see official announcements coming um, rapidly so that we can comfortably say that this is a, a, a well received initiative. And, and finally, of course, one of the uniqueness and innovation of COP27 is not just the cities initiative. There was a number of initiatives in every COP, but the difference of this year is that there is for the first time a very clear intent to have the first ever climate and urbanization ministerial, which means climate ministers, which are the custodians of the UNFCC process traditionally and legally, but inviting ministers of urbanization, ministers of housing, ministers of public works or ministers of local governments to the COP so that they could also have a debate on what does urbanization mean in terms of ambitious climate action, vice versa, how urbanization could help ambitious climate action and vice versa. And, 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 and that, that whether this could be a stable agenda or, or st standing agenda, um, so it's not just uh, a constituency as local energy governments, because urbanization is not only led or managed by local energy governments. Let's be realistic. There are national governments, especially for the new cities that is developed across the, especially in the global south. The new cities usually are not developed by local energy governments, existing ones. It is mainly developed by planning agencies or ministers of housing or urbanization of the national governments. That's in one of the reasons why there should be a ministerial discussion. But when we say climate and urbanization ministerial, we as a default see that there will be appropriate uh, level of dialogue between the LGMA members and leaders of LGMA and the ministers. Uh, since um, it is not purely assigned to ILCTE or LGMA in the design of this ministerial, we are relatively um, in, the second phase, in the second circle of this. This is primarily designed by the presidency and UN Habitat, let's be realistic, but we, will, we are already expressing our, our wishes, our, our contributions, uh, and uh, we still haven't seen any draft yet on, on what it looks like, this urbanization ministerial, but we are also aware on the 17th of November, very likely it will be the first ministerial in the morning, and it will be focusing on a broader context, con context of multi-level and holistic urbanization, and then followed by several other ministerials, which are which may be more thematic or sectoral, like buildings, like resilience, like transport or mobility, so that this will be reflecting the true spirit of the solutions day that we are talking about urban solutions, and urban solutions is also related to urbanization, but then each element of urbanization has its own uh, unique discussions and stakeholders to be on the board. Um, if if the, that day could be designed with this notion, I think we will really get to a very good positive result. Um, I see Eva from CMR, uh, since it's related to the surge initiative, let me read it immediately. Uh, is there a way to join the, the, through the surge web, but in a general way to support the principles of surge and then maybe decide to continue in a more concrete? I, I uh, in, in the develop further and position at COP20, so they flow understand content. I think uh, that's a very valid question, Eva. I recommend you to share this as a feedback to the document that we were shared, we have shared with you. Um, obviously, I think. Uh, we should expect there will be first comers, but it should not be closing doors for others, especially the more this is being known by partners, the, the more engagement as well. So I am expecting the COP27 presidency will not exclude that some, some networks or some processes, some partners may come later on. Uh, so, but it would be very good if you can indicate this so that they receive this feedback as well uh, and when they review all the inputs. So let's continue. Um, the other agenda, an important agenda of, of the process is that the global stock take, as you remember, is continuing. The first technical dialogue was held in June, and this had a huge outcome in the sense uh, that uh, we have a paragraph six as part of the SB 56 conclusions, which invites every stakeholder to convene local, national, and regional and international global stock take meetings. In fact, this was what we have been asking for since the beginning of the year to, to make sure that 
the, the stock take is not focused uh, a one-off event at a UN event, but rather it's spread around the world. And that is, we were having the, the, the legitimacy or the background of the Talano dialogues. It was also, again, at the beginning, it was only one-off event at Katowice, but with the presidency of Fijian, uh, government, we made sure that there is a Talano dialogue at every city and, and region and the capital of the world. In that period, that made a huge impact because it was for the first time many stakeholders heard about NDCs, their NDCs of their national governments, and even those who prepare NDCs heard about local national governments, how they can contribute. And that played a key role to bring more ambitious uh, NDCs towards Glasgow. So we believe um, once we now have this now really good legitimacy from the from the UNFCC and the co-chairs, we could plan for our local and regional stock takes. And we would like to suggest that these are an opportunity to, to discuss a stock take for climate emergency, not a stock take for the past, but a stock take on how we can prepare for climate emergency, how we can make sure that we go beyond business as usual through multi-level action, obviously, but we are aware the national politics can be having some challenges. So if the climate emergency stock takes, takes, as, takes place at the local and regional level, it is much easier for the nations to embrace it afterwards. And in that sense, um, one of the other additional features that is different than Talanoa dialogues is that we would like to make sure that in any local or regional stock take, we should focus on primarily NDCs, obviously, but also have a look at our own commitments and how these two relate to each other. And the third is the climate justice, the just, just transition at home, but also just transition globally, that local and regional also address their partners in the global south, so that they also address how climate justice could be part of the second phase of the Paris Agreement. And what we are proposing is that uh, we are uh, thinking that we could set up the first global calendar and make this announcement at Daring Cities in October, which will be virtual, of course. Uh, we have already agreed that throughout the LGMA annual cycles, we will make use of the global task force meeting in February as our strategic planning, and we will make sure the Daring Cities in Bonn as our culmination of our strategies towards COP27. So along these lines, we could kick off stock tech for climate emergency by the LGMA members with an initial calendar in early as, or, as early as October. And then once we advance, we could also aim that we will convene the global multi-level stock tech at the next Daring Cities in, in June in Bonn, in person and hybrid, uh, which will be just before the last technical dialogue. So if we can manage to make such a journey, uh, that would be a fantastic contribution that, that we could mobilize as much as possible input to the global stock take process. And with, with this, we will go to Dubai COP28 because the global stock take will conclude at the uh, COP28 in Dubai. So the third technical dialogue in Bonn is not the end of the process, but it's an important milestone. And if we can have a global multi-level stock take, that will be a fantastic, both a continuity of the, our achievements at COP27, hopefully, but also set a very important pace towards the, the global, global stock take that will happen at the UNFCC. Uh, we have seen over the past years, if local engineering governments declare their climate emergency, if they commit to neutrality, national governments can much easily take this up. And we have to save, we have to follow the same spirit and practice that stock take for climate emergency primarily starts at the local and regional level and with those friendly national governments we could take it to the global level so let's let's aim, plan for this and we will get back to that we are like every stakeholder are expected to submit our inputs we would like to submit um, our statements during the first technical dialogue and one single document, uh, including the statements on adaptation that Regions 4 and Committee of the Regions have also made. Um, we will also share in this input this vision that how we would like to take it forward. But uh, submissions are also not necessarily extremely limited by time, obviously. The earlier uh, the deadline is better because the secretary prepares a synthesis report, but you can always submit uh, additional uh, submissions uh, throughout the year. So let's plan for such a mobilization so, so that we make sure of uh, our preparations that focuses on the initiative and the climate and urbanization material as a key point, but also invest heavily 
to plan for our stock take for climate emergency as well. Um, finally, this is the last slide. Um, our calendar is going on, obviously. This is a list of events that we have covered in the past couple of months and in the next couple of months. Um, this year will, this month will be heavy because of the, the Urban 20 Mayor Summit in, in Jakarta, as well as the Africa Region Climate Week. September will start to be getting busy. Uh, there will be UN General Assembly, but we will also see um, the, the uh, Clean Energy Ministerial Mission Innovation, uh, G G7 on urbanization will take place on the 15th and 16th of September. October will particularly be very heavy and very hectic with urban October, as well as um, the pre-COP um, and, and in addition to the uh, events like um, Climate Chance, Dakar, uh, Africa, uh, Cote d'Ivoire focusing on finance, uh, but as well as uh, our own events like UCLG World Congress in Daejeon, C40 Summit in Buenos Aires, uh, G20 Summit, and of course, this, this, the period will start with Daring Cities 2022 um, as well, virtually. Uh, and then we'll go to Sharm el Sheikh and we will complete the year with the Montreal Biodiversity Commerce of Parties, which makes me the handover to our friend and colleague and guest, Ingrid, so that she could briefly summarize what's going on and for towards COP15. I have uh, taken the liberty, Ingrid, to show our partners the, uh, the screenshot of the website of the host government, Montreal. Um, this is mainly a logistical website, but it's again gives you that it's now announced as COP15, but also Kunmin Montreal is clearly visible. Ingrid, the floor is yours. Uh, feel free to share uh, your updates. Thank, thank you so much, Eunice. And let me just quickly uh, do that. I should okay. stop sharing then. You have slides, yeah, I see. I think you'll have to, yes. Great. Uh, I just want to, kind of, yeah, everybody should see it now. Let me just put it on display mode. Okay, so there's really not much. Um, just to say that the uh, working group, open-ended working group, the fifth uh, session will be taking place um, in Montreal at the same venue as the COP, uh, just ahead of the COP itself. So that'll be from the third of the and the, to the fifth of December. And the purpose of that is to advance the negotiations. Uh, you will remember that in one of the previous updates, I indicated that the negotiations in uh, Nairobi, which was the fourth intersessional meeting, did not go as well as planned. It was great for, for SATIs and subnational governments, but in terms of the global biodiversity framework, it was very slow. So they're having this meeting um, and that will take place um, uh, uh, in Montreal. And it's primarily to get the, the bracketed texts, a uh, greater con uh, consistency and greater uh, consensus on that. Um, specifically in relation to the global biodiversity framework um, so that when we get to COP the negotiations will run more smoothly um, but there are also some technical issues uh, for example the reporting monitoring and review framework also needs further negotiation. Uh, COP itself then the dates have been confirmed um, sorry there's a typo it's from the 7th to the 19th of December uh, and it is going to be held at the Palais de Congrès um, uh, in Montreal uh, the provisional agendas of the meetings are already uh, available. Um, they're on the website. There's the link. And, and thank you also for sharing that lovely screenshot, uh, Eunice. The high level segment um, for the CBD um, COP is taking place um, over the days of 15 to 17 December. And that is essentially, as with all these high level segments, is really just to provide the political momentum for the adoption um, of the uh, GBF and for its, uh, uh, as well as other related decisions. Um, at the moment, there's not much information, but the um, information on the modalities and the organization of the high level segment will be made, made available in due course. And I think by the time we have our next webinar, we should have that information. Also, just to note that the uh, nomination, the registration process has opened. So for those um, observer organizations that are accredited, the closing date is 31 October. 
um, there is also a notification on this on the on the web page. Um, it requires a letter and an online registration process. Similarly, for organizations that are not yet uh, accredited but are requesting admission as observers, that deadline is a, a little earlier, so that's the end of, of September. Um, there was a notification that came out earlier this week on side events and exhibitions, so um, the online registration for both these um, is also open. I've included the, the, the link there in, in the um, slide. Um, and that closes um, basically at the end of September, and then they will make an announcement on the, um, the final list of side events and exhibitions uh, on the 15th of October. That will be posted on, on the website. As far as the official parallel events is concerned, and that's all of them, um, for example, not just the cities and subnational side event, but also the one on business, youth, etc. I'm afraid I don't have any new news, and there's also been no notification on, on this. Uh, we are expecting to get something around how, how it will work, um, final dates, etc. within we've been told within the next two weeks, so that takes us to the end of August, but we should know uh, certainly by the next webinar and we will certainly keep everybody posted. And then just the last point to say that the information note for participants has also been shared um, and it's on that same uh, website and there is the link and I will leave it at that. Thank you so much, Julius. Thank you, Ingrid, uh, and congratulations uh, for your progress so far. You all know, uh, since the beginning of the year, we're trying to have this uh, briefing jointly with the, the climate and biodiversity process, not just because uh, these are very interrelated, but also the, the mechanisms are uh, interesting and unique. There are some some opportunities that that we as as a community or observers could have in the biodiversity space, which doesn't exist in the UNFCC and vice versa. And it's good to know how, how we can help each other or we can learn from each other, um, because uh, there are are each of the agendas and the mechanisms are a bit different, but there are a lot of things of similarity, and we can learn as well from each other. And and we always have recognized or commanded that the way we are engaged in the biodiversity space is much more advanced compared to the climate space in terms of our recognition of legal documents and action plans, the COP decision. So uh, this gives us the reason why when we have a climate and urbanization ministerial and thinking of its outcomes, we could also make use of such good practices in other fora uh, because simply speaking, we are not just convening or asking for a climate and urbanization or an initiative just for the sake of it, but we believe this will make sure that urbanization or, or, or multi-level action will become a core element that has, still has a lot of rooms to improve or, or clarify uh, because there's no one size fits for all, but it will help us to advance much better with this kind of global recognitions and, and new uh, mechanisms in, in place. So, um, with that, we have 10 minutes left. Um, I mean, we were thinking of in the past couple of months, we had extended even to 75 minutes. But I think for this uh, call, we could come aim for a closing in the next couple of minutes, like by 11. But we can stay for a while if needed. Uh, I see we have responded, uh, Anthony and Eva's feedbacks on the Q&A. But if you would like to intervene, uh, verbally, you were also able to do this. Just raise your hand and we can turn on the mic for you or, or the screen, uh, or you can still type into chat box. Let me just put once again my slide, if helps. This is our calendar, um, the stock take, and the initiative. I think these are the most important things to, to take into account in the next steps. Um, Africa, I mean, we have, we didn't have too much uh, summary, but we know at the Latin America Climate Week and the Dominican Republic was also, there was also a good agenda. Uh, at the Africa Climate Week is particularly very strong on, cli on cities and, and climate uh, with Marrakesh partnership with ICLE. There will be numerous sessions. Uh, I think the agenda is on the way. Registration is closed, but on-site registration is possible. 
Um, so we will also share with the tentative calendar of our agendas at the Africa Climate Week in the next couple of days. Um, and uh, we believe that will also empower our, our work. Uh, as we said, we'll check with the presidency whether they wish to have an additional consultation, in-person consultation during Africa Climate Week. We believe it will be helpful, uh, but we will, we will keep you informed about whether this will be possible. Uh, and please don't forget to send your comments um, uh, and feedbacks to the draft surge initiative by the deadline of next Monday. Uh, and I think it would be uh, uh, extremely important to have feedbacks. We know Egyptians have started to receive feedbacks from their partners, especially the multilateral development banks and some parties. So they're, they're very, very positive. Uh, and it will also be good to see a similar response from the LGMA constituency as well. I see a message from Eva once again, uh, again on surge. How will the monitoring of surge be like? Who will be in charge of this? The governance board that will be in charge of it? Thanks. Um, yes, uh, the governance structure at the moment is still subject to final fine tuning. Uh, but the logic is that it is a broad alliance that has a lot of stakeholders beyond the LGMA, including national governments. Uh, then there will be a secretariat. Um, we have some views and we will share this uh, in our submissions and there may be some slight modifications. So the logic is that this governance structure will, will be the one who will monitor it. And again, we all say that this is subject for final improvements during consultation period and i think it up to cop 27 so we cannot think that it will be just closed down in just a couple of weeks um i think the key is to receive a, a promising feedback for endorsement that presidency feels confident that there is a buy-in even there are concerns or there are recommendations or there are differences in the way to roll this out in terms of governance and, and, and implementation. At least at the first stage, by the end of August, uh, they would like to see a strong response from the constituency. And the governance can come up. Uh, and we also know, let's be realistic, as we said before, there were so many initiatives, be it at the UNFCC space, be it at the UN climate summit. Some of them literally had a life. Uh, for example, we have seen gap fund, Covenant of Mayors, Compact of Mayors was also a result of these kind of initiatives. Some really had had a life, some faded out, and it's not just limited to cities only. There are so many initiatives on energy, on, on business, that after a certain year, it has disappeared. This was possible. Uh, as we all know, governance and financing of such initiatives is, is a challenge. But this doesn't stop us to rethink, taking into account the new conditions, the new uh, background or the new uh, framing conditions, especially the thing that was different than the previous initiatives that multi-level now is as part of the Paris Agreement second phase. So there is like a legitimacy to create such initiatives. Second, we are hoping that there will be a climate and urbanization ministerial. These two elements makes this year's initiative much different than the previous year's. And uh, let's remember, the presidents have clearly stated that they would like to have ownership from champions. Nigel Topping was at our event in, in Cairo, personally, uh, and in collaboration with the, the Egyptian champion, obviously, which is, again, a clear signal that we are not recreating a complete new channel, but trying to make sure there is consistency and synergy with existing processes. Therefore, I would uh, tend to um, feel that there are a lot of new ingredients or inputs to make sure this initiative being more ambitious or successful compared to previous ones. And if even if this fails, this will be another lessons learned for future activities. So we should never give up creating and inventing and, and making sure that the, the key issue is that climate action is not in the level of ambition that we all need to be. And any initiative, if, if this could help us to more move forward, it should be welcome. Um, and, and, and of course, one of the biggest, very, very ambitious um, elements is that 
in no way we had as LGMA been involved in this process so actively. Uh, in the past, we had been a bit in the different processes, but here it's the first time that we are really so much involved in the, in the design of it, in the kitchen of this process. So that's another reason why we should be very, very uh, hopeful. Finally, I see a, a feedback from Anika Naju RLP, who is your target for participation in COP15 and your events before COP27? Um, Anika, the events all have their own specific mandates and mission and target groups. But over these years, we have seen that these are multi stakeholder events, be it daring cities, be it uh, regional climate weeks or climate chance. Um, there are some events that is unique for the networks only. For example, the World Congress of UCLG and C40 Summit. They, they are their internal uh, either decision making or, or, or governance meetings as well. And part of those are open for third parties or, or partners, but some of them are closer for in their inner circles. Therefore, uh, the key answer is short answer is that it is open for all actors involved in the or believe in the value of engaging with local and regional governments in climate action uh but the way they engage may be a bit different uh, the same goes for cop 15 which is biodiversity and 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 biodiversity agenda also has its own uh networks uh governance and and, and leadership in terms of the constituency um if you are interested i think it would be good you can connect to ingrid uh, especially for the biodiversity agenda. I don't know your affiliation, but um, feel free to indicate us that uh, if you are interested, we can keep you involved in the, in the discussion as well. Yeah, happy to do so. Great. I think we reached to the end of our session for today. I see a relative silence now no additional points uh, raised um let's remember with this will be repeated in the afternoon at 4 p.m if you have time feel free to join us at that session we will have colleagues from c40 who will also join us for sharing their experience the mayor's migration council which would like to make sure a dialogue and synergy in the climate process as well uh and if not we'll keep you informed and and stay in touch and please don't forget to provide your inputs to the uh COP27 surge initiative. Take care. Bye-bye.